One of the most exciting features of your Nikon D5100 is its ability to shoot and record incredible, full, high-definition 1080p movies at up to 30 frames per second. Now, many of the same techniques used to create great still images can also be used to create great movies as well. It all starts with the location and a quick look around. But in addition to the standard things I'm going to check out, the background, the angle of the light, interesting settings, I'm also looking for a storyline, a way to tell the story of my trip. There are plenty of times when a standalone movie clip works great, and I switch over to HD movie mode when I'm shooting still photographs all the time. But today, my plan is to create a complete movie that I can edit together later to let my friends see what a great time we had. I'm in Miami, and the plan today is to just relax and have fun. We'll enjoy the beach, take a walk, and later we'll get together with some friends. So there it is. That's my storyline. Let's begin by going through a few basic settings, starting with the HD movie setup. Just use the menu function and select movie settings from the shooting menu. Then choose movie quality. Here you'll see a number of different options. You can choose to record in full HD, which is a frame size of 1920 by 1080, as well as some smaller sizes. You can also choose a frame rate of 24 or 30 frames per second, or FPS. 30 FPS is the standard rate for most television programs, while 24 FPS is a more film-like look. I definitely suggest you go through all these different settings and try them out to see how they affect the look and feel of your movies. Okay, since I'm creating a movie, it's time to get creative and think like a director. I'll be shooting for the edit. That means I'll take a bunch of different shots at each location and then piece them together later. Whenever you watch a TV show or a movie, they're made up of a bunch of different scenes that consist of lots of different shots, medium shots, wide shots, close-ups, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I don't necessarily have to shoot them in order either, because I can always go back later and switch them around. Also, I'm gonna take a bunch of different still shots today because it's easy to integrate those into the movie as well. Let's talk about camera handling when you're shooting HD movies. To keep the camera steady, you have a number of options. One is to use a tripod, like this. There are lots of great tripods on the market. Be sure to get one that can fit both a standard tripod head for shooting stills, as well as a fluid head. A fluid head is designed for movies and allows for extra smooth pans and tilts. It'll also keep the camera steady in any position, even if you let it go. A tripod is the way to get the steadiest movies possible, especially when you're shooting with a telephoto lens. But one of the benefits of shooting HD movies with your D5100 is that it's so small and light, you can get some really great angles and moves by hand-holding the camera. Now, when you hand-hold, the first thing you want to do is make sure vibration reduction is switched on. When you're hand-holding, you're going to want to brace yourself. Now, here's a little trick I like to use. Just pull the strap taut against the back of your neck, like this, and you're good to go. But standing and shooting is only one option. Moving the camera when you're shooting adds another dynamic look to your movie, and it's so easy to do. Just take a breath, start recording, and then carefully move the camera from side to side or up and down, and you'll get some very creative looking movies. The very angle display lets you get some amazing angles from down low or shoot from above your head and still easily see your frame just by tilting the display. When I'm creating HD movies, I can take advantage of many of the same modes and effects that I use when I'm taking still images. By simply using the mode dial, you can select any of the scene modes, such as sports, portrait, landscape, and close-up, as well as the P, A, and M modes, and the in-camera special effects. Now, here's a great opportunity. I want to get some movies of my friend riding around on the water, so I'll start by putting the camera in sports and activating the live view, so that I can easily frame up my shots. To start to record, I just press this button here. And to stop again, I just press it again. To watch your movies, just press the playback button here. And then use the multi-selector to pause, rewind, fast forward, and play again. One of the benefits of shooting movies with your D5100 is full-time autofocus. The focusing options are the same as when you take stills while using live view. To choose a focus mode, press the I button. Then scroll over to the focus mode setting, press OK, and now you can choose from three settings. AFS is for stationary objects. AFF, or full-time autofocus, is for moving subjects. And then MF is manual focus. I can also select an AF area mode. For instance, I can choose between face priority that detects and focuses on multiple faces at once, 
or subject tracking that lets me position a focus point on a subject and then locks focus on that subject as they move around the frame. Since there's a lot of motion here, I'm using the full-time autofocus and subject tracking. Another essential part of recording movies is good quality audio. Your Nikon D5100 has a monaural microphone built right in. It's right here, but does a great job of capturing all the ambient sound while you're recording. Now, you'll want to be aware of this when you're recording so that you don't block the mic with your fingers. And remember, anything you say will be recorded as well. But to get even more focused sound, you can pick up one of these. It's the Nikon ME1 Auxiliary Stereo Microphone. Sometimes you may find yourself in a situation where the light is different within your shot, such as my friends here under the awning with the bright sunlit scene behind them. Hey guys, smile. If I shoot this normally, the exposure is being affected by the bright light in the background, and my friends are dark because they're in the shadow. But there's a simple solution called Auto Exposure Lock. First, let's set the AEL button. Use Menu and go into the Custom Settings menu and select Control. Then assign AEL AFL button. Now choose AE Lock Hold. This will lock and hold the exposure whenever you press the AE Lock button when shooting in any auto or scene mode. Okay, let's do this shot again, but first, I'm gonna frame up a shadowed part of the scene and press the AEL button to lock in that exposure. Now, I'll start recording. Much better. Now I can see my friends clearly, and since they're the most important part of my movie clip, it doesn't bother me that the background is overexposed. Many of the effects that I use when shooting stills can also be used when recording movies. Just turn the mode dial to effects, then turn the command dial to rotate through a number of different built-in special effects. Ah, one of my personal favorites is selective color. All I have to do is select a color by placing it within the little white box at the center of the screen. Press the up arrow and OK, and now when I record my movie, everything will be in black and white except the color I selected. Very cool. Now that we've shot some movies, let's talk about editing and modifying them. To start, you can do some basic trimming right in the camera. Keep in mind that when you're making these in-camera edits, you're actually creating new copies of the original footage, so you never have to worry about losing or altering your original clips. First, select a movie that you want to trim, like this clip here that has some camera shake in the beginning. Play the movie and press pause, the down arrow, at the frame that you want the new movie to begin. Press the AEL button to activate the Edit Movie menu. Now scroll down to Choose Start Point and press OK. Press the up arrow and select Yes and OK to save the edited copy. Now you'll have a copy with the beginning trimmed off. You can also save a single frame of your movie as a still image. Just play back your movie and pause on the frame you want to save. Now press the AEL button and go back into the Edit Movie menu. Select Save Selected Frame and press OK. And there you go, a JPEG still image lifted right from your movie. For more extensive editing of your entire video, there are quite a few options available. I suggest you start by installing View NX2. It's on the CD that came with your camera. This includes a simple to use movie editing software program that will get you started right away. Other software programs are also available from a number of different sources, but no matter which video editing software you use, the basic techniques are the same. It starts by importing the movie files from your SD card, and then using various editing tools to rearrange, trim, and modify your movie clips, as well as adding various effects, titles, and soundtracks. With a little time and practice, you'll be creating movies that you'll be proud to show to your family and friends. Exactly. <laughs> More like my sunburn. <laughs>
Mr. Matt. <laughs>